These estate planning basics are from the law firm of Bogarts and Gordon in Tucson, Arizona. I would like to learn about estate planning in Tucson, Arizona. Shoot, mighty warrior. What documents should every individual have in place? Each individual should have at least a will, general, financial, power of attorney, medical power of attorney, and a living will. What is a will, and why do I need one? A will designates who will receive your assets at death, and who will administer your estate, the personal representative, ACA executor. For an individual with any minor children, the will also nominates the child's guardian. A will allows you to name your own beneficiaries, your personal representative, and a guardian for minor children. It also makes administration of the estate simpler in many respects. Without a will, Arizona statutes determine which family members are your beneficiaries, and who has priority, to act as personal representative. What is a general power of attorney, and why do I need one? A general power of attorney is a document that names an agent with the authority to act on your behalf for financial and business matters. This gives the agent a legal authority to access your assets and property, but with an obligation to act in your best interest. The goal is to have someone who can act for you and take care of your financial affairs if you become incapacitated. A general power of attorney must obviously be implemented with care and only with someone in whom you place a great deal of trust. An effective general power of attorney is absolutely critical in the event of incapacity. Without such a document, if an individual becomes unable to manage his or her affairs, their family or friend will have to go to court to become appointed as a conservator, which involves the court appointing an additional attorney, an investigator, and holding an open hearing to determine incapacity. The court-appointed conservator must also comply with continuing supervision of the court. Therefore, having an appropriate person named under an effective general power of attorney can save thousands of dollars in expenses, as well as a great deal of time and trouble. What is a medical power of attorney, and why do I need one? A medical power of attorney is a document that names a health care agent to act on your behalf in making medical and health care decisions. This gives the agent a legal authority to receive medical information from hospitals and doctors and to make medical decisions if you cannot make them for any reason. An effective medical power of attorney can allow your selected surrogate to make decisions in emergency situations and avoid the need for court interaction on an emergency basis or even long-range court action in the event of incapacity. Without such a document, an emergency guardianship might be necessary to make critical medical decisions, or a standard guardianship might be necessary if an individual has dementia and cannot care for themselves similar to a conservatorship. The family or friend will have to go to court to become appointed as a guardian, which involves the court appointing an additional attorney, an investigator, and holding an open hearing to determine incapacity. Therefore, having an appropriate person named under an effective medical power of attorney can save thousands of dollars in expenses, as well as a great deal of time and trouble. What is a living will, and why do I need one? A living will, or advanced directive, is a document that spells out your wishes in the event of certain medical situations, most commonly, terminal and incurable situations with no possibility of recovery. It gives hospitals and doctors, working with your medical agent, the legal authority to implement your wishes. The goal of a living will is to avoid any unnecessary difficulty for your family or friends in the event of a catastrophic situation, by clearly defining your wishes. Many people want to make sure they are not kept alive artificially in an incurable situation, and this document avoids the need for court action to implement that wish. Most importantly, it can avoid the type of struggles and arguments that can erupt among family members in these situations, as unfortunately seen in the media. What decisions do I need to consider in preparing an estate plan? Part of an attorney's services are to discuss your options with you, to help you come to informed decisions as to what your documents should say. You certainly don't need to decide everything before meeting with an attorney. However, the following are a list of the decisions that will have to be made before finalizing your estate plan. Asterisk should I have a revocable trust or just a will? Asterisk who do I want to receive assets at my death? Asterisk do any of those beneficiaries need their shares held in trust? Asterisk if a continuing trust is necessary at my death, who do I want to manage that trust? Who will be trustee? Asterisk who do I want to administer my assets if I become incapacitated, agent under general power of attorney, and or the trustee, asterisk who do I want to make medical decisions for me, if I become incapacitated, agent under medical power of attorney, asterisk who do I want to administer my assets at my death, personal representative, asterisk do I have enough assets, to worry about estate tax? If so, should I consider advanced planning to reduce estate taxes? Do I need a revocable trust? Estate planning is not a one-size-fits-all proposition, and the answer to this question depends greatly on your individual situation, and ultimately is your decision. If someone tells you everyone needs a trust, that is not true. 
However, a trust can offer a number of potential benefits, of which you should be aware, and the importance and applicability of these benefits vary depending on your circumstances. Some of the potential benefits of a revocable living trust are, asterisk avoiding probate A properly funded revocable living trust can help avoid the need for a probate through the court system. Probate is the process of transferring assets from a decedent's individual name out to his or her beneficiaries, and giving someone the authority to administer the estate. By transferring all assets into a revocable living trust during lifetime, it is not necessary to file a probate, and the nominated trustee can proceed under the document without any court approval and action. Generally, this would save about $3,000 to $5,000 in attorney's fees and court costs asterisk managing assets in the event of incapacity A typical revocable living trust names a successor trustee who will not only take over administration at death, but who will also manage assets for your benefit in the event of incapacity asterisk estate. Tax in certain situations, a husband and wife can create a revocable trust that divides into separate shares when the first spouse dies, and this can help minimize or eliminate estate tax. This is typically referred to as an AB trust division, and involves carefully drafted language to make sure both spouses get to use their estate tax exemptions. If a married couple has enough money where estate tax is an issue then this arrangement has the potential to save hundreds of thousands of dollars in estate taxes asterisk continuing trusts perhaps one of the most important benefits of a revocable trust is to establish continuing trusts for beneficiaries. For instance, it is important to consider what trust arrangements should be made for younger beneficiaries, otherwise they will receive everything by age 18 or 21. To delay outright distribution to a beneficiary past age 21, the document must set out the terms of the trust, appoint a trustee, and specify how and when assets will be distributed. For instance, think how important it is that a child not receive a $500,000 inheritance outright and in his hands at the age of 18 or even age 21. In certain situations, giving this young a beneficiary cash of that amount in their hands could be disastrous. Not only might all the money be wasted, but worse, the child's security, incentive, and well-being can be threatened. A trust allows you to specify provisions, so the child can benefit and receive distributions, but not have direct access to all of the money, 